Hi, welcome to Daddy Curb's Farm. I thought it would be kind of cool to give you a little update on all the different chicken coops and the, and the way we're managing our chickens and our ducks right now. Some people have asked for that, so I thought it was time to give you the update. First, we're starting on the back porch of the house uh, because I want to show this piece of furniture that I built. And the, the furniture is a brooder that we're going to be using for the first couple weeks of the lives of the chickens that we get out of our incubator. This is the first batch to enjoy the brooder. Notice there's two sides with the divider down the middle. Our incubator didn't do so well. we'll st we are still learning how to use that and so a lot of the eggs on this batch uh, ended up not making it. But this little guy right here is part of my uh, my meat chicken breeding experiment. This this is a Freedom Ranger hybrid crossed. It's not cross actually. It's a Freedom Ranger rooster with a Freedom Ranger hen. And my goal was to do some black Cornish roosters with the Freedom Ranger hens. But I think we may have messed up. This looks like maybe the black Cornish rooster and a uh, barred rock <laughs> hen. So we, we grabbed the wrong eggs, really, because we have a bunch of mixed hens with our black Cornish rooster, and I think we just grabbed the wrong egg when, <laughs> when we got ready to put those in the incubator. I do want to mention something about the brooder. Several people, when I've shown it in pictures, have mentioned how shallow it is, and I'm very aware that it is shallower than what is probably ultimately the best size or the most practical size, but there's a reason why it's this shallow. When I built it, I had a couple of things in mind. One of those was that I'm on a back porch. It's not very deep. We have a screened uh, section here and then a very short distance and the wall of the back of the house. So I wanted a piece of furniture that wouldn't block this space. So that was one of the factors that caused me to make it only this deep. Another factor was that when I was designing this piece of furniture, I wanted to build it using only one sheet of plywood. The top, the bottom, the sides, the back, all of that comes from one sheet of plywood. So with that in mind, having this whole thing built with one sheet of plywood, four foot by eight foot, strategically cut so that I could get this uh, design and then using just one by twos to create the doors. I will highlight that in a blog post at some point, but for now I just wanted to give an overview of how I'm doing this brooder. I built the stand of the brooder using just uh, some old two by sixes that were laying out behind the shed. So that's reclaimed lumber. Nothing on top or not much of the brooder is reclaimed. Most of that's new lumber, but this is reclaimed. The heat lamp is, in this case, not actually a lamp. It's a ceramic element. It's not a bulb because I didn't want to use light. Sometimes the light can mess with the chicks, or at least that's what I've read. So this is adjustable up and down just through a hole using a clip. In Texas right now, it's over 100 degrees most days, so we don't actually need it but it's there for when I do need it. The second side of the brooder is housing our silkies. We decided to breed some silkies and we think we're gonna try to sell them. But this is um, a batch of eight silkies. Again, several of them did not make it out of the incubator, but uh, we got all kinds of colors and shapes here. Nice, nice little fluff balls on their heads. Some of them have racing stripes. Some of them are lighter in color, some are darker, but those are our silkies. And they'll only stay in the brooder for a couple of weeks before they either go to a larger brooder or into a coop. Continuing down on the back porch, we have one duck here. This, this little baby here is separated because this was the runt. This is, hold on, hold on. This is the duck that we call Cookie, and believe it or not, Cookie is full grown. And because Cookie is so much smaller than the others, uh, he can't be mixed in. They, they've, they've proven that they're gonna be mean to him. 
So Cookie gets his attention from us, our daughter. All right, I'll put you back. Our daughter loves to play with Cookie, and Cookie gets playtime in the yard and on the porch, and sometimes she even sneaks Cookie into the house. So outside, basically, we have um, five coops and then a couple of smaller temporary coops, but in this row here, we have coop one, two, and three. Coop one is the one that still looks like a goat pen. Right now there's no birds in that. Coop two, that's this one here. Those are the breeding ducks. Um, we call those the wild babies because we got our cats. This is Dopey. Have you guys met Chevy? Chevy, I can't remember if I showed Chevy on any videos, but Chevy is our newest kitty and pumpkins best friend now. Uh, Chevy came off of the back of a truck, a Chevy truck. I'm not generally a sucker, but uh, there was a truck with kids in it holding signs saying free kittens, and I was compelled to pull over and pick up the last one they had, which was Chevy. So Chevy's a pretty good kitty. Okay, so in pin two, th these are the breeding ducks. We call these the wild babies because we didn't interact with them. We let the, uh, the breeding pair of ducks, the, the male and female, make a nest, fill it up, and brood them and hatch them all on their own. It was an experiment. We didn't use any incubator for those. That was kind of an interesting thing. And then these are our older Australian spotted ducks with a few silkies in coop number three. As we go around the farm, this is this would be in position number four. This is coop four that we usually call the meat coop because it has mostly been used for raising up meat chickens to you know 10 or 12 weeks or whatever, and then we butcher them right in this area. But uh, right now, the the chickens that are in here are the Freedom Rangers. This is our big Freedom Ranger rooster with three Freedom Ranger hens and. Uh, Right now they're providing fertilized eggs for us to incubate so that we can try to raise our own meat chickens. We have always in the past ordered day old chicks, raised them up and butchered them, but that just doesn't feel right to me. So I'm, you know, I'm gonna try to go down the path of raising our own. All right, so now in position number five, coop number five, this is the main chicken coop. This is where all of our, our main egg layers live and there's about 20 birds in there. We, we got one black rooster hanging out on the outside for some reason. But the reason they're not out today, some days we don't let them out because we've had a challenge with um, a bobcat coming in and taking them. So we'll let them out for a day or two and then we'll keep them in for a day or two. And what we're hoping is that that kind of interrupts the, the normal meal cycle of the bobcat. He won't see it as an op a daily opportunity. So today is one of the days that they had to stay inside the coop. Right next door to the main coop is the chicken run that's attached to the coop. And the intention of this was always to be the run attached to the coop that, that the chickens left the coop and went into the run and that was the routine going back and forth because there's a little chicken door in between. However, what we found is that most of the chickens, no matter how we clip their wings or, or manage them, they like to jump out. We just go ahead and let them free range and right now we have a few ducks and geese, the larger ducks and geese living in here with the two goats. The relationship is pretty good. We just have to make sure the goats don't eat the duck food because that's not good for them. Out here under the playhouse, which was never intended to be a chicken coop, we did close it in, but it was gonna be for rabbits. It's acting as a temporary chicken coop because we're trying to separate some of the silkies to see if we can breed only certain hens with certain roosters. And uh, eventually this will not be a chicken coop. It's gonna be cleaned up. I know there's some concern with having chickens under a playhouse, but the truth is right now, nobody plays in the playhouse. Our daughter doesn't get in it anymore, and our grandson is still too little to uh, go up in there by himself. So before any kids start playing in it again, we will take the chickens out and clean it thoroughly. The silkies in here, we have one rooster and four hens, and uh, they did, in fact, 
brood a couple I, I think I told you a fib on the porch I said all of those silkies came from the incubator but the truth is two of them this morning came from under one of these hens this is just one of the temporary locations that we're doing some breeding experiments with our silky chickens and the other location is out here in the yard and that's in a chicken tractor and there's a lot to learn from the chicken tractor this is the chicken tractor I think some of you may have been waiting on an actual video of how I built this and how I intend to use this and I meant to do that a long time ago but the challenges that I've run into is that I never built it all the way and it didn't function like I thought it was going to so I was trying to learn some things before I actually did a video on it some of the things that work about it is that it is a mobile cage it's a tractor chicken tractor and it does move through the yard and it puts the birds on a new patch of grass every day or so uh, but uh, we had some lessons to learn one of the lessons was initially I didn't have wheels and that was too hard to move after I put wheels on it and it was a lot easier to move I realized I didn't put them on very well and uh, they started to sag now it still works but it needs done better so I'm gonna come up with a better solution for this but in the meantime you know life goes on I gotta I gotta use what I got so another thing that didn't work out so well initially was that I had a rope on it that I was planning on pulling the the tractor every day with that rope but that didn't work out so well either So now this is how we move this chicken tractor. We just put this dolly up under the front and we pick it up and we pull it. And that works out pretty well. It's just an extra piece of equipment that has to stay out by the chicken tractor so that we can move it every night. Another thing that needs improvement is I actually need to resize my door so that it's a little smaller than the frame right now it hinges out nicely the design of the door is not bad it's just made a little too big and because it's too big I can't easily put some handles that would come out the front once I get the door made a little smaller and the handles put on and the wheels fixed this will be a whole lot easier to manage pulling it through the, the landscape the original purpose of this at least when I designed this chicken tractor was that I was going to raise up some birds some some egg layers I was gonna pull some egg layers through the landscape put them on fresh pasture and get eggs my original thought was that I would actually get eggs with fewer inputs I thought I could feed them less less grains less chicken food because they were gonna be on fresh grass every day that ended up not being true and I'm not sure exactly why the original five chickens that were in here were full-size hens they were the Freedom Ranger hens it was a black Cornish rooster with four Freedom Ranger hens first of all what I realized that five full-size birds is way too many for this four foot by ten foot box they were decimating the the grasses and the foliage I had to move it twice a day or they would completely eat everything in there uh, I reduced it at one point to just the hens and that did a little better and then I even reduced it further by taking the full-size hens out and putting silkies in and that does a lot better and there are five silkies in here one rooster and four hens and um, two of them up in the nest box right now and we we do get eggs from this every day but back to the full-size hens what we noticed after a couple weeks they quit laying eggs and we went for nearly a whole month all four of those hens didn't lay a single egg for four months uh, for about a month and you know initially I thought well I gotta start feeding them again I must be starving them but I fed them and I fed them more and I even bought expensive food and they wouldn't lay eggs in here no matter what so I ended up taking them out and as soon as I put them back in the main coop they started laying eggs again so for whatever reason they didn't like the chicken tractor Okay, Luke, put the, the goat food on the shelf.
and the duck food on the floor. Now we have to feed the, the goats and the ducks separately, like I said, because we don't want either one of them eating the other's food because it's formulated differently. The duck food is definitely not good for the goats. Inside the coop here, one of the ways that I try to utilize the resources is that they dirty this water up and I got a little compost pile going out here and every night I just empty their water into the compost keeps that moist it's an egg. Ooh, you got an egg good job it's a real mess right now but I wanted to go ahead and show that this this table was built from scraps and it gives a place for the goats to jump up and it also gives a place for the ducks to hide out and lay their eggs underneath so it's dual purpose piece of furniture in the goat house and that's really it that's how we manage our ducks and our chickens on the daddy curbs farm always kind of in transition we got some here and some there and they're not always going to stay exactly where they are because some of these coops in fact the the one that i labeled the meat coop which is coop number four is going to be tore down because that location eventually hopefully within the year will be um, a barn i'm going to build a barn in that location so that whole coop is going to disappear and we'll find another way to manage the the chickens that we call meat chickens ultimately i'd like to raise them in chicken tractors but we've had a lot to learn about chicken tractors so it's all a work in progress the way we manage our birds and uh, really everything every project on the farm is a work in progress we're learning as we go we didn't grow up in the country we grew up in the city so everything we do here is a new experience and it's a journey we're learning all right luke go put the scoops away That's a wrap for the uh, chicken and duck update on the Daddy Curbs Farm. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a real pleasure learning this and it's a real pleasure sharing this. I appreciate all the time you spend with me here on YouTube. I encourage you to check out my Instagram and my Facebook and my blog. As long as I'm wearing a shirt, I always have a basket. Luke's putting the chickens away. Go ahead and toss it in, Luke. A little bit of feed helps encourage them to come in for the night. And that's all I'm doing for the night. Thanks again for watching. I'll talk to you soon.